one by one you will be searching for an element so that kind of search is what i will call it as a linear search or sequential search i can perform this linear search both in array as well as linked list Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session. My dear students, this is going to be the first topic that I have in the unit number 3. So guys, what exactly I will be discussing? Yes, I need to search for the topic. Yes, oh, I need to search for the topic because the topic is all about searching and also sorting. So guys, yes, what exactly I will be discussing in this session? Let's take a look quickly. So I will be discussing about one of the important topic and also it's very, very simple. That's going to be the linear search. So guys, yes, what exactly linear search is all about? Before we understand this linear search, I think I need to give you some of the basic concepts about searching. So yes, without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So guys, when it comes to the searching, searching in the sense it is very simple. Imagine I will have the array. So first of all, I should have the array. So this is what I will call it as a array, beautiful array. So guys, I will have my items here. So 10, 20, 30, 40. So when I have my array, I have got four elements in the array that is 10, 20, 30, 40. So now I need to search for a particular item. Say for example, I need to search for this. Do I have this 30 in this array or not? So how do I search? I will be comparing this 30 with the first element. Do I have this? No. So I will compare with this. Do I have this? No. I will compare with this. Do I have this? Yes. The search is matching. Okay. The element found. So this is what this kind of search is what I will call it as a linear search. One by one, you will be searching for an element. So that kind of search is what I will call it as a linear search or sequential search. So my dear students, you need to understand one more important thing when I'm discussing this linear search. Sir, when you are saying that a linear search, why are you so particular about linear search? Do we have any other type of search? Yes, I have one more type of search. That is what I will call it as a binary search. So you need to understand by in the sense two. How do I uh, perform two search now simultaneously? My dear students, what happens is, so I will divide this into two parts. I will divide this into two parts. This much is one part and this much is one part. So I will start dividing this array into two different parts and I will start my search. So that kind of search is what I will call it as a binary search. How exactly we are doing that? I will be discussing in detail about binary search in my next class. But now in today's session, I will be discussing what exactly linear search is all about and how are we doing this linear search. So that's what I will be discussing with all of you in today's session. Yes. So guys, before I start my linear search explanation to all of you, let me compare this binary search and linear search. What exactly it happens? Let, let's check that one by one. It works on sorted as well as unsorted items. What is the meaning of it? Guys, observe here. I don't have to have the elements in a sorted order. Sorted order in the sense what? Observe, you have in an increasing order. It can also be in a decreasing order. It need not to be in the sorted order. Need not to be in ascending or need not to be in a descending. So it will work for both because it is checking individually one by one. But when it comes to binary, it is not like that. When it comes to binary, it is not like that. So it requires the sorted item. It has to be in a sorted order. Why? Keep that question in your mind. I will be answering that in my next session. But I'm discussing the binary search. All right. What is the next point that we have? Very efficient if the items are less. Why? Because observe, I have only four items. I will quickly match with four elements and I will tell whether the item is there or not. But imagine if I have more number of elements, will you call that as efficient? No, that's what you need to remember. So fine. It works well with the array and not with the linked list when it comes to the binary search. But it well, you know, works well with array as well as linked list. I can perform this linear search both in array as well as linked list. But when it comes to the binary search, I can just only use the array. I cannot implement this concept in a linked list is a very, very important point that you need to remember with respect to the binary search and linear search. 
So fine, what is the next one? More number of comparison are required if the elements are more. Obviously, because imagine, imagine I want, I'm searching for 40. So what happens? I need to compare with this first three because my element present at the end. So obviously it requires more number of comparison. So that is the most important thing that you need to remember. Sir, why do we need to perform more number of comparison? Because it is sequential and my element present at the end. So it demands more number of comparison. So that is a headache for me. So how do I overcome from more number of comparison? So by implementing the concept of binary search. The binary search will reduce the number of comparison when compared to the linear search. That's what you need to remember. All right, so fine. You are giving so much of build up to the binary search, sir. So what exactly it is? So before that, let's understand the linear search, how exactly it is working. I have an algorithm to understand how exactly linear search is happening. My dear students, very important that you need to understand how exactly my linear search is happening. So fine. What is that I have in the step one? Step one, I have LOC. I have, I am initializing this value to this LOC variable. What is this LOC? LOC in the sense, I will treat it as a location. That's what you need to observe here. I will treat it as location. Imagine what location, sir? Imagine I have an array. So array is location. So that's what I will call it as a LOC. Fine. So always you need to remember array has got the index. Now my I value that is LOC is pointing to the minus one. That's what you need to observe. So fine. LOC is pointing to minus one. That's the value that I have initially before I start anything. So LOC has got what? Minus one. Remember this. This is very, very important. Fine. So we have assigned this minus one to this LOC. After that, what is that I have in the step number two? Observe the step number two very carefully. In the step number two, I have the for loop. In the step number two, I have the for loop. What is that I have? So I'm, I'm having, I'm initializing one to this I. Okay. I'm initializing one to this I. Let us reinitialize it to zero. Imagine I'm initializing this I value to zero and it should run. This for loop should run till n or let's make it as n minus one. Okay. So what is the meaning of it? So how many times the for loop should execute? So how many number of times that I have, how many number of elements that I have in the for loop, that many number of times it should work. Say for example, I have five elements in this array. Say for example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. How many elements I have? Five. So my for loop should run 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This many number of times. How many number of times I have? Total five number of times my for loop should run. That is the meaning of the statement. Okay. From 0 till 4, it should execute. Okay. How many number of iterations? Five iterations. What is that? It is executing five times. So guys, these steps, it is executing five times. That's what you need to observe. How many number of times? Five times. Why it is five? Because I have five elements. So fine, you understood that. What exactly it is executing five times? So first, it is checking if A of I is equal to key. Let's imagine key is equal to 40. What is the value that I have in the key? 40. So what is the meaning of this statement? A of I is equal to is equal to 40. That is what it is checking. So fine, what is the i value right now? Imagine in the first iteration, i is pointing to 0. So i is pointing to 0 in the sense a of 0 is equal to is equal to 40. a of 0 in the sense what? 10. 10 is equal to is equal to 40. Is it true? No, it is not true. So what happens? The i value will get incremented. So it will move to the next index. So now i value will get changed. a of i, a of i right now. What is the a of i? a of i in the sense a of 1 is equal to is equal to 40. a of 1 in the sense I have 20. So 20 is equal to is equal to 40. No, it is not equal. So again, I will increment the i value. Again, I will go to the next. So what is the i value? So a of i, that is 2, is equal to is equal to 40. So a of 2, what is the value that I have? So 30. 30 is equal to is equal to 40. No, it is not. Again, after that, it will go to the it will go to the next iteration. So, what happens? A of three is equal to is equal to forty. A of three. What is the value that I have? Forty. So, guys, I have forty is equal to is equal to forty. Is it matching? Yes, it is matching. True. This condition is true. When I will execute this statement, so which is inside this if statement, observe 
this statement is inside the if statement. So when will I execute this if statement, whatever I have inside that? So only when the condition is true, I will execute. Otherwise, I will be skipping that and I will go to the for loop. Now, the condition is true. I have to execute this statement. What is that I will execute this statement? What exactly is happening? So I value whatever I have. I am storing it inside the LOC. What is the I value right now? I value is 3. Where did I match? I value is 3. So 3 is the I value right now. So this 3 is getting stored in this LOC. Previously I had minus 1. Now we are initializing it to 3. That's what you need to remember. Cool. So I initialized it to 3 and go to the step 4. So here once I execute this statement, I will start executing this. So fine. What is that I have to do? End of if, go to the step 4. So go to the step 4 and listen directly I will come to this. So now I will check one more condition. If LOC is equal to is equal to minus 1. Is it minus 1? No. I will skip executing this part. Directly I will execute the else part. What is that? Key found in the location. What is the LOC? LOC in the sense 3. So whatever the element that you were searching that found in this location is what I will print. Suppose if I don't find this element, I will not change the LOC value. It will be minus 1 only. So in that case, LOC is equal to is equal to minus 1. That condition is true. I will print unsuccessful search or element not found. This is how the linear search algorithm is there for all of us. The same thing, I will just convert it into a program. Before that, let me just show you how exactly it is matching. First, I need to, this is the key value that I have. I am searching in this array. So first, I will start with the first element. No, it is not matching. Second element, no, it is not matching. Third element, no, it's not matching. Fourth element, it's not matching. Fifth element, match found. Okay, this is how one by one, if you are searching, this is what I will call it as a linear search. That's what you need to understand. This is what I will call it as a linear search. Sequentially, you are searching for an element one by one. That's what I will call it as a linear search. All right. A simple program I have, whatever the same algorithm what I had, same thing I have taken. So guys, observe here, I have the header file and the main function here from, from here, the execution of the program starts. And I have uh, the variables, I have E of 100, why do I have array? So because I need to store the elements and I have key to store which element I want to store, okay, or uh, which element which I want to search, that's why I have key and I have I i for uh, the for loop which I'm using and n, n specifies the number of elements that you want to enter inside the array. So c is a flag which I'm using. What is that flag? I will explain, okay, when it comes to the program. Now first in the printf, what exactly that I'm using instead of printf, you can also use c out. So what exactly that we are doing here? I'm asking enter the number of elements that you want to insert inside the array. So first I'm preparing my array. So that's what I'm doing. So fine, that value is getting stored in the n. Suppose, for example, if you want four elements, you can just enter four or five, any number, whatever you wish, that number will get stored in n. So fine. Then after that, enter the array elements, whatever you want to insert. So guys, for this, I'm not inserting only one element. I'm inserting more than one element inside the array. So for that reason, I'm having the for loop. Okay, how many times this scanf, in the sense, it should read the value. How many times it should read the value? So, n number of times it should read the value. That's what you need to remember. Okay, so that's the reason I'm giving n. Sir, if that is the case, you should have given equal to n, no sir. Why you have given less than n? Because I'm starting it from 0. If it is 5, since I'm starting it from 0, I will end it by 4. That's why less than and I have given. That's what you need to observe here. Alright, so fine. I will be storing each and every value in the array. Okay. So for example, i value is 0. Okay. I will uh, assign e of i. Let me just show you that also. Uh, you, you will understand it very you know, easily. Guys, how exactly this for loop is working? Let's check that. Imagine I have a beautiful array. Okay. e of array. Like this. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me just simulate two values and I'll show you how exactly it is showing. So guys, i value is 0. Right now, my i is here. Okay. So fine. It will check the condition. So i is less than n. Imagine n is equal to or uh, let's take uh, 4. Okay. n is equal to 4. So fine. So n value is 4. i value is 0. 0 is less than 4. The condition is true. So fine. I will come inside. 
so you uh, you can enter one value so fine that value is getting stored in this address okay so which address so a of i a of i in the sense what is the i value zero so a of zero in that location whatever the value that you enter so in this location it gets stored i will enter 10 so a of zero fine after that i value will get incremented so right now i value will get incremented by one so now i is pointing to this again it will check the condition one is less than four yes it is true only when the condition is true i will execute this okay again i will enter one more value so 20 so 20 is getting stored where in the a of i so what is the i value a of one one is the i value so one in the sense this location i will enter 20 so i will get stored in this location like this i will be entering all the values okay so find this is how i'm entering the, all the values now come to this part which element i want to search so that is what i will ask the user so fine enter the element to be searched so then i will read the value from the user you can just give instead of scanf in c++ we give c in okay that's what you need to remember and the arrow marks so fine after that again i will have the follow because i need to search n number of times this statements should work n number of times n in this is number of elements that i have so that's what you need to remember same thing what we did in the algorithm if i is equal to is equal to key if match found then what i will do c i will make it as one and then i will come out of this if c is equal to is equal to one element is present in the location key and i plus one otherwise i will make i will print it so element not found so like this it will go under the loop like what we did in the algorithm this is how we perform the linear search my dear students and this is all about the concept how exactly we try to search for an element sequentially so by this, let me end the session. Thank you. Bye-bye.